Hey guys, what is going on? This is Amstar, and I have a story for you. And before I get to that, this gameplay, this it's not about the gameplay, right? This is probably going to be a Moab um, Tuesday, but whatever. But it's not about the gameplay at all. So I'm just going to stop talking about that and get into what I'm going to talk about, and that is pain is temporary. You might hear heard Eric Thomas, his speech and whatnot, but if you haven't, go check his channel. Just type in Eric Thomas, pain is temporary. But... In his, in his speech, he goes like, pain is temporary. It may last a minute, an hour, a day, or even a year, but eventually it will subside and something else will take its place. If I quit, however, it will last forever. And now that, that speech is like written and engraved in my skull because my whole life is pain. It's, it's just been pain. I had 13 surgeries already and I'm already 17. You know, let's say I go down the road, how many more surgeries am I going to go before I'm 20, you know? And the past two surgeries are retina detachments. And if you're not sure what the, the retina is, it's the main thing that it, like, makes you see vision and everything. And if that retina detaches from everything it's attached to, you you lose your vision. You lose your vision completely. There's no fix to it. You would have like a couple of days in order to fix it. And if you do not get any like treatment or surgery, you're going to be blind, you know. And that's something I don't, I don't want to do. Like I was diagnosed with cone dystrophy. And this is the first time I ever told the whole like internet or whatever because I was afraid of what people might say. But you know what? I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid of what you're going to think of me. Because everybody's going to have their different opinions. And I'm not, and I'm not gonna sit back and listen to all these haters say something bad about me, because it doesn't affect me. I've been bullied all my life because of it. It doesn't, it doesn't affect me anymore. So this is why I'm going to tell this story right now. I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know how many gameplays I'm going to have in the background of this, but I'm going to tell you. So, anyways, I was diagnosed with cone dystrophy. They didn't really know it right away because they didn't show signs or anything, and it was new, right? Nobody really knew what it was, and then with the with the cone dystrophy, it's pretty much my vision acuity is like 2400. If you don't know what that means, 2400. Say we're saying 20 yard, uh, 20 um, 20 20 yards away from something, it'd be like 20 feet or 20 yards. I I don't know. My mind is going crazy because of the thought of the retina detachment. But either or, you know what I'm talking about. So you're staying 20 feet from something, I think it is. 20 feet, alright? And it would be like 400 feet for you in your eyes if you have like 20 20 vision or something, 20 30 vision, whatever. It's going to be like that, alright? So that's how I interpret my eyes and whatnot. And people always ask me, can I see things? You know, can I see objects? You know, I can see objects, but like if I'm sitting in the front row of the classroom, I see everything that's going on. I just can't see like words and everything that's going on the board, like written on the board and everything, you know. So it's yeah, I can see everything. I can I can see things. I can visualize things. Like the doctor said, I won't be able to tell colors, climb a tree, drive. I can't drive, but I can climb a tree. I can tell colors from anything. I can ride a bicycle. I can ride ATV. I can drive an ATV. I can't drive a car. I can't drive a truck. The things I want to do, like drive a truck, I can't do. I'm restricted to that. But that doesn't set me back from behind. And it doesn't stop me from doing what I want to do. Is I guess what I want to say. And like I said, pain is temporary. Um, one year ago, about over a little bit over a year ago, on March 9th, I went through the retina detachment surgery, and what they do is they put this little buckle on the, like the, the the cone or the the retina and everything. It's like a little, it's not like a, it's like a rubber band, but not like a rubber band that you like put around your wrist or put around paper or anything. It's it's actually like a medical rubber band or whatever to fix like the retina and everything and the surgery and put it all back in place. But what they do is they put that on your eye, or whatever, and the surgery lasts about like 90 to two hours and whatnot. And they put that on the right eye, and it's supposed to like attach again and like fix itself. But I'm still going through the recovery stage from last year, and the reason why is because there's liquid, and if the liquid starts moving 
it, it's like liquid, liquidy, liquidy stuff inside your eye, and if it starts to move back by the middle of your eye, that starts when there it, it starts to get dangerous, and then you gotta go back in there and fix it and then take it out. But with this procedure, they're gonna go in my left eye. They're gonna put that rubber band in, and then they're gonna like try to drain this amount of like li liquid because there's more liquid in my left eye than there is more in my right eye for some reason. My right eye is better than my left eye. So it, it's a different, it's a different thing. And last year, they want to say I'm not diagnosed with Knobloch or Stickrum syndrome. It's very odd. I, not, not a lot of people have this. I'm like, I don't know, like maybe one in a million. You know, it's very odd. It's very odd. I don't know if you can hear the pain in my voice, but one day this pain will, will disappear. And happiness will once arise. You know, I mean, just one of those things that just happens, you know. It happened yesterday. I was in Chicago. And I was with, my, with the teacher and, and everything. And I, I know the, the signs. And the signs are like, picture like an old TV. And you know how that staticky, the sat, the sack, when it makes that annoying noise and you have no picture. Okay. Picture picture like that that and then you know those old films that project on the wall and everything but it t takes tape and everything and then sometimes you're watching it and like it flickers even though the video is still going it flickers in the corner like there are a loss of pickles pixels picture the loss of pick uh, pixels I'm sorry I keep saying pickles pixels and then put that um, staticky inside the pixel loss and like reduce that by like like 80 but you still kind of see like the staticky and then put that in your eye up in the up in the corner of your like whatever eye you think you whatever lose it in and it, it, like whenever you blink it flashes and then it slowly kind of slowly fast mediocre speed dissolves into your eye and whenever you blink or move your eye you see that and that's when you know you kind of are something's wrong with your eyes and you might want to go check that out some people know what I'm talking about. Others may be like, "Are you on crack?" No, guys, this is real. This is real life. Uh, I I dealt with it. I went through 13 surgeries already with my ears and everything, and I'm used to it. I mean, I'm one tough sob. I guess you can say I have a pain tolerance of I don't know. I'm just used to it. I guess people say, "How do you do it?" You know. Just keep my keep my head up high, cause you know there's always gonna be when you're in that tunnel. No matter how far you walk that tunnel, there's always gonna be a light at the end of that tunnel. You know, I mean, I have my friends, I have so many people that are close to me, and when when you're in trouble sometimes like these, you realize who's actually there to help you, to help you boost you up, to give you the motivation to keep on pressing through that tunnel, to go see that light. You know. It's hard some days to keep going, but it's the people out there that actually keep you going, that keep you motivated, keep you strong, keep you going. The people that love you and pray for you all those times are the people that you know are the closest to you, that mean something to you. If I learned anything from anything from all the surgeries I went through in my life, it's the people that care about you the most, that you want to keep close, you do not want to lose them, because they are the people that will keep you motivated to do what you want to do. When you leave, when that pain goes away, you continue to do what you do. It's a setback in life, yes it is, but you will take those steps and recover from this. Any, any, Anything you're going through, heart, heart problems, lung problems, any body, body parts, Keep in mind that when you're walking through this dark tunnel, there's people with you, and you keep your head held high, because at the end of the tunnel, there's a light, and then there's going to be more light, and then you might see some more tunnels, but you keep your held, your head held high, and you think of this, and pain is temporary. It may last a minute, a day, or even a year, like mine is, but eventually it will subside and something else will take its place but if you quit and you don't move on you're gonna regret it and it's gonna be one of the biggest mistakes of your life this can relate to anything you want but just remember
keep your head held high and keep pushing. That's all I have to say. If you like this video, please give it a like to show a little bit some support and maybe a comment or two. That'd be awesome. But other than that, I don't know how, how long it will be until I upload another video. But if you like this content, you can subscribe. I'm not trying to make this a YouTube video. I'm just trying to get my feelings out there. And that should be all. My name is Amstar. My real name is Corey.